we are headed to the woods. We are headed to the woods to see what we can find today. Usually about every weekend we like to go look uh, when spring starts coming on and grass starts popping out. And uh, it is a little early, but we uh, did find some mushrooms in a video, uh, our first video last week, our walk in the woods. This is the hill that I have to get down first. It's the hill. <laughs> it's the hill I have to get down first. And uh, so we'll get on down here. This will be number two in our walk in the woods series. You want to go ahead of me? Okay. I don't know if they want it. Here comes the dogs and the cats again. So, right at the bottom of the hill, they spotted some crocuses coming up. We have a lot of wild crocuses that come up uh, all over our property. Of course, there's wild onions everywhere. And I have uh, used them some. I have uh, dug them up and chopped them up and, and used them occasionally. So... Let's see, where are we going to head? Straight back to the creek, maybe? Yeah, probably go back to the creek. I don't think there's any young little stinging nettle coming up yet. I don't think. Dead, yeah, there's some dead nettle I've seen. Not back here, I've seen it in some yards. We'll talk about that sometime, maybe. All right. Headed to the creek. Yeah. We showed that again. We showed that in the last one. the creek it's not running very good it's running a little bit I see a few little streams not a lot yep. there's Tippy somebody's asked about Tippy there's Tippy Molly is our daughter's dog so anyway, there's the creek going up toward town <laughs> on up there a couple miles. And then down this other way, it goes down to the river down about three or four miles. Well, there's a creek. <laughs> I like using these crates. I don't know why this one's back here. I don't see nothing wrong with it. I use these crates for all sorts of stuff. So I did find something. There you go. That's foraging. Oh, that's considered foraging. I found a milk crate. <laughs> I don't know where it come from. What? This milk crate. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Lee was using it hunting. He was sitting on it down here hunting. So that explains that. I thought I'd done found something. It's done. I did find something. I found my crate lay pack down here. <laughs> so I am seeing all kinds of elderberry back here. We we know, we've told y'all before, we have elderberry growing wild all over here. And uh, it's all back through here. I mean, just everywhere you look, there's elderberry coming up. Yeah. More up here. I mean, it's just all over back here. We love using elderberry. Uh, elderberry is one of my favorite medicinals. Um, but we have a whole bunch of it up there by the house. So we just basically use them. But it's, uh, um, can't have enough. 
so I can't have too much I should say okay Lee found some turkey tail and let's see all right you look on the bottom and it's pretty white now as it gets a little older it can get brown just a little but there's several distinctive things about turkey tail and the real light around the edge is one of the things and then the small pores fuzzy on top, fuzzy on top. that, older that one one's dry yeah really that one's kind of dry on top, though. yeah Let's see. yeah those are old i'd rather get this newer stuff here mm -hmm. So I didn't bring a bag. A bag. So I don't have to come back here with a bag. Yeah, he can come back here with a bag and get some more of this. Now there are a couple of false turkey tails. One of them has uh, gills instead of pores. So, uh, you know, there's several markers. But ain't none of them poisonous, so. No, none of them's poisonous and they're all medicinal, but turkey tail is the most medicinal. Yep. So Most here, let me give you this. You can pack those and come back and get some more. Okay. And then I'll show what to do with it up at the house. So here you go. They don't get very big. They get anywhere from one to four inches. Like if there's, if you find something like this that's over four inches, it is not turkey tail. Turkey tail gets one to four inches. And, um, I mean, little world, of course, there's a little bitty one. Yeah. But, you know, bigger ones are one to four inches. And this they have the white, on these old ones white, there. I can't focus here, white on the outside there, on the outside ridge will be white. And they'll be white underneath, but sometimes if they're getting a little older, they'll be a little darker, not pure white. And then the tiny pores. So, a little bit fuzzy on top. So, there you go. Oh, stand up. Wait a minute, Hippie. Are you on the rock bar? You goofy dogs. <laughs> goofy, goofy. He is a goofy one. He has been bringing up carcasses to our house like crazy he is constantly bringing a possum a coon something up to our house to our yard and then just um he'll waller it around and then he'll chew on it a little bit and the other day i come home and there was a small um groundhog that he had drug up I don't know if he's finding them dead or killing them, but he, Tippy's the one that's doing it. He's bringing up all kinds of carcasses to the yard. He is not bothering the chickens anymore, though. We uh, put the shock collar on him and shocked him about two or three times, and he is done with chickens. <laughs> so that works. Bottom gully. <laughs> the bottom gully, the rivers, or the creek is back that way. And then you come up and there starts hills going up uh, on the ridge. And we are kind of down in the gully here. There's a neighbor barn. And then there's ridge all the way across. And then our house is over here on this ridge. You can barely see it through there. There's his shed. And there's our house through there up on the ridge. And then it comes back down the hill. And then this is our woods that is kind of in the low spot uh, behind the house. And our house is up on the ridge there. Because on the other side of our house in front of our property, it goes back down. And uh, we're kind of on a ridge that runs all the way through there. And down a little ways. Anyway. Now, our last <clears throat> video, we showed the uh, amber jelly roll. And uh, so I just found some that is dried up. I'm going to test out this theory 
or this, uh, what I, I heard was that if you found it dried up, you could still um, rehydrate it. So we're gonna test that out. Since I have found a few pieces of that dried up, I'm sure I could find more, but I just wanna test out the idea that you can rehydrate it even after it's dried up like that. This is real dry and crumbly. So we'll take that with us and try that out. Okay, so all we found today was dried up, <laughs> dried up turkey tail and dried up uh, amber jelly roll. We're gonna test out the uh, uh, amber jelly roll and see how well it rehydrates like I read. Um, I'd read and, and saw that even if it was dried up, you could, and this is, I want to break it apart, but it's, it's, you know, it's very dried up. But from what I understood, you can rehydrate this by soaking it in water for a little while. So we're going to try that. And then I want it to show the turkey tail we got. It is pretty dry too. It should be flexible, and this is not very flexible. A little bit, not much but it is um, um, pretty dried up. These are not real colorful. Turkey tail comes in different colors. These are not terribly uh, colorful. A uh, false turkey tail is, uh, is kind of like this too. Uh, a uh, false turkey tail that it has uh, uh, gills. And then there's also a false turkey tail that has a smooth back. This has I don't know if I can focus in, but it has pores. Let's see, one of them looked better. I could tell better. I think maybe that one. I don't know if I can focus in on the pores, but it does have pores and it has the white around the edge. Now these are pretty dry, so they're not very flexible, but a good fresh turkey tail will be uh, thin. It's very thin very very thin and a, a little bit stiff but still flexible and uh um kind of velvety on the top and uh but now false turkey tail has a lot of that too but the false turkey tail won't have the little pores now these are not as colorful as most turkey tail but ours never have been back here Ours are never real colorful back here. They have, uh, um, see this one has like a gray, brown, white, darker brown. That's usually what we find back here. They can have beautiful reds and, and uh, different colors in them. But this is what we pretty normally get back here. So, there you go. Lee has went to find me some more, and I'm going to get those uh, going in um, <clears throat> in uh, alcohol. I have some now going in a, a cheap vodka. Um, I'm going to dual extract that. I'm going to do a, uh, a, an alcohol first for six to eight weeks, and then I'll strain that off and use the same mushrooms and do them in a... a water and simmer them in water for uh, a few hours and then mix those two together and uh, that's a dual a dual tincture and uh, that is I'm told that is how to get the most medicine out of it you can um, chop them up and simmer them in water and make a tea or you can uh, put them in the alcohol and just make a tincture but the way to get the most medicine out of these um, is by uh, the dual dual um, extract, uh, dual tincture. <clears throat> so, um, okay. Also, the um, the turkey tail is very medicinal and good for a lot of things, and uh, it is uh, used in a lot of medicines, and uh, it's great for. Um, for uh, everything, anti-inflammatory, it's good for coughs and colds and flus and everything, uh, antiviral, all kinds of wonderful things for the turkey tail. Uh, so, 
Um, you can also get turkey tail. You can buy turkey tail uh, peels and uh, you can buy a, a turkey tail uh, a tea. I have some uh, coffee. I have some dandelion coffee that has turkey tail in it that I bought through that uh, Ticino uh, company. And uh, so anyway, so uh, when I was sick, I simmered these down and let them soak in hot water for uh, a couple of hours and then drank the tea from that. And um, so... So, Lee has gone to get me some more of that, and in the meantime, I'm going to start soaking these. Okay, so I've got these in warm water. I started a little. <laughs> I've got these in warm water, and uh, I'll let that soak for just a little bit and keep checking back until they are rehydrated. I can already tell that they are going to rehydrate because they are already um, soaking up water and getting soft. So I believe this is going to work really well. So that is good information to know. And I'm um, still waiting on Lee for some more turkey tails before I get that started. So, oh yeah, definitely. This is probably not going to take a long time for these. They're already getting soft and uh, jelly, jelly-ish. So we'll let that soak in warm water for a little bit until Lee brings my more turkey tails and then we'll uh, work on that. So, checking on this again and I am really surprised. It has really uh, rehydrated back up just like it was when I found it last time. Um, it is just really jelly-like. Let me just get one piece. Oh good, the light is showing how translucent it is. That's what it looks like all the way around. It's just like a jelly, and it's a an, uh, translucent amber color, and that rehydrated really good. I'm kind of surprised, honestly, uh, how good that rehydrated. It is really just back to the jelly that I got last time that I showed on the last video that I cooked and ate, and um, yeah, that worked. While I'm waiting on Lee to get back with the turkey tails, I want to show y'all something I made this last fall. Um, <clears throat> in the fall when uh, my garden started, you know, uh, our garden started dying out a little bit and I had some yarrow that I had gotten. Um, I picked the last bit of the yarrow and I dried it. And uh, I just wanted to show you what I've done with it. You, a lot of people know uh, that yarrow is good for stopping bleeding. Good for a lot of other things, but uh, but one of my kind of go-tos uh, if I get a bleed is uh, go to yarrow and it stops bleeding. So I can't remember where I learned this at, but um, <clears throat> I took and dried it and then powdered it. And this powder, it's dried yarrow powder and it works amazingly at stopping bleeding. And uh, of course, there's lots of other things you can do with it, but I just powdered it. Oop, I spilled a little bit. Oh, darn. Um, I didn't spill much, just a little piece. Anyway, there you go. And so, I'm gonna do that again this year because I've only got about that much. So I'm gonna do that again this year and get me a good jar of this yarrow um, powder. So uh, anyway, good thing to know. Good thing to have on hand. <laughs> okay, there's my turkey tail in my brandy. So I will mark this. I'll mark it turkey tail in brandy, uh, 225, 23, and give it about eight weeks and then uh, uh, do my dual, dual tincture. Uh, so there you go turkey tail and amber jelly roll mushrooms. Thanks for watching. Y'all give us a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and watch us on Thursday nights at 6 p.m. Central Time.